Hi there, my name's uh, Professor Deepak Atecha. I'm a cardiologist at the University of Birmingham uh, in the UK. And along with our co-chair, Isabel van Helder from Groningen, uh, we chaired the 2024 European Society of Cardiology, Cardiology Guidelines for atrial fibrillation. Uh, and that was in association and collaboration with the European Association for Cardiothoracic Surgery. Yeah, so AF is interesting. It's, it's been, uh, in a way fairly popular in the media recently um, and I think the reason for that is it's becoming a lot more common. Now there's a number of reasons for that. We're getting better at treating heart failure and coronary disease so people are living longer uh, with those conditions but overall we're seeing that the prevalence of AF is probably going to double in the next two to three decades uh, and that's going to put a really big impact on health systems. AF is not just associated with bad outcomes for patients, poor quality of life and so on, but of course huge health and social care costs around stroke, heart failure, hospitalisation, even if you go in for a hernia your length of stay is longer and some of the recent evidence suggests that AF is contributing now to the increase we're seeing in vascular dementia in particular. So I think there are very many long-term impacts from AF which mean that getting on top of it and treating it well is really vital. The new 2024 ESC guidelines are completely new, they've been started from scratch um, and we've used a lot of innovations in order to make them uh, easier to implement in clinical practice. And in particular, we used information from the ESC's first randomized trial called STEER-AF, uh, which looked exactly at how well guidelines are being implemented and what we can do to improve them. Um, so in general, the concepts of um, the new 2024 AF guidelines are around shared care. So what that means is a multidisciplinary team of health professionals working with patients in order to achieve the best outcomes. Uh, and so the guidelines have been accompanied by a simultaneous launch of a patient version of the guidelines, um, which was written in, in, uh, with the help of our patient members on the task force. Um, in terms of the newest parts of the, of the guideline, I think the key standout feature is the reorganization of the whole guideline into the AF care approach. So C-A-R-E, and that stands for comorbidities and risk factors because treating those is not just important for the patient, but actually the success uh, of any AF treatments. The A stands for avoiding stroke and thromboembolism, so using um, anticoagulation, in particular direct oral anticoagulants, DOACs, much more than we have been in order to target the avoidable strokes and obviously future thromboembolic events. The R standing for rate and rhythm control, being aware that every patient really should be offered those therapies, uh, and again, that should be in a shared decision-making uh, approach. Um, and then E, really important, that patients are re-evaluated and dynamically assessed because, of course, AF changes, but also all of those underlying risk factors change. So having that AF care approach, we hope, will make uh, it easier for patients and clinicians to get the optimal treatment for each individual patient that they come across. Yeah, so in terms of the main areas of focus, um, as I mentioned, the AF care approach is critical and we have new patient pathways that help clinicians and patients to see what are the important points for each of those sections. Now, of course, uh, guidelines are long and uh, lots of recommendations, but we've tried to distill those into the real core messages so that those can be implemented uh, and of course then other things can be added on. So for each of those CARE groups we've got um, pathways to help with that um, and then we've looked at different applications of that. So for example if you've got paroxysmal atrial fibrillation or persistent atrial fibrillation or you're having a cardioversion or you've got an acute coronary syndrome where you need a combination of different um, blood thinners and antiplatelets. So we've done a range of pathways in order to make life easier for everybody and to get onto the core bits of treatment. Sure, so we know from steer F trial that the implementation is relatively poor out there. So there are clearly challenges. It's not an easy task to fix, but I think if we can start to make guidelines better and easier to implement, if we can change the language so that people can understand why they're having it, if we can communicate better with patients, if we can bring them into that decision making so that they know when they need to call for help, they know the importance of the therapies that they're having and they're part of that decision making, then I think that joined up approach will lead in the future to better outcomes for patients uh, and less impact from AF um, on our health and social care systems.